Hey y'all, happy Saturday. It's been a minute, I know, but you know, with good reason, with good reason. I've been, you know, busy packing. Hey, I see Karen's here. Hey, 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 good morning, good afternoon. Boa tarde, uh, boa noite. Uh, let's see, bom dia, wherever you are in the world. Uh, good to see you on this Saturday. Um, I haven't been live in a minute because I've been packing. You've probably seen the video or at least heard on the podcast. I have my apartment in Portugal. I am here for the summer in the States, packing up, doing all the things with my daughter. Last night was senior prom. Uh, if you followed me on IG, you've seen uh, the picture or some of the pictures. Uh, so proud, my moment. And yeah, in like a week and a half is graduation, then a lot of moving. So my house is in disarray, disarray. And I'll probably do a video. I probably should do a video. Y'all let me know if you um, want a video on like decluttering, which I probably am not the best at that, but <laughs> or at least how I'm thinning things out. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I was trying something different. Give it up for Instagram because I saw some, not a hair influencer, but it was like somebody's tutorial. And I was like, hmm, this looks easy enough. I think I could try it. And I tried it and I took my hair down yesterday and I like it too. I'm like, oh, maybe this will be my style for a little bit. We shall see. We shall see. But yes, so in the house packing, I was packing before the live. That has taken up a lot of my life. Um, but I am going live both days this weekend, right? Today and then tomorrow at two. So you have me all weekend long. But of course, today we're going to talk about medical tourism, something that I know a lot of us either have curiosity about. Maybe it's a little deeper than curiosity, maybe some interest. Maybe you've had to go to the doctor or you need to go to the doctor. And you've been reluctant because, you know, in America, you don't know how much it's going to cost. Or if you do know, you know what that number is and you're like, mm. so we're going to talk about medical tourism, the growing industry, and more so on the personal level because we have one of our Blacks Global favorites joining us. But before we welcome her here, I want to see how y'all are doing and say hello. Hello, Nicole's up in here. Yes, lots of moving parts. <laughs> it is our year. Nicole and I hung out last weekend. Yes, yes. Hey, Mocha Mosaic is in the house. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? How are you? Yes. Tell your friends, share the live, join, do all the things. Um, for those of you who are here live and don't know me or you're watching in the future for the first time, I'm Krishan Wright. I'm the founder of Blacks at Global and the host of the Blacks at Global podcast. Blacks at Global exists to empower and inspire members of the African diaspora to pursue a life abroad. And now it is my year to do the same, y'all. So I'm thrilled. So yeah, tomorrow I'm going to have the team from Portugal The Place joining me live. We're going to talk about my finding an apartment in Portugal, more specifically for you, like if you're looking in, into moving abroad in a place like Portugal that's really popular now, like how do you do that? How do you navigate that? So we're going to tackle all that tomorrow. Um, hey, Craig is in the house. Hey, Craig. I'm glad you can join live. How you doing? Tuning in from Philly, Philly. Um, so glad you're here. And let's see what else announcements I have. Oh, so Portugal, let's keep on that thread. Um, some of you follow our Black Utopia. You may have seen them last week in an awesome article in the Wall Street Journal about retiring abroad. They were prominently featured. I'm so excited. So happy for them. They were also guests on the Blacks of Global podcast this past season, season five. And they were featured in the Condé Nast article that I wrote earlier this year on retiring in Portugal. So our Black Utopia and I are teaming up to host 
the Move to Portugal Virtual Summit. So put it on your calendars. It is November 4th and 5th this year. And I'm excited. Alicia and I have been meeting, messaging constantly. We meet every week, tackling everything. And so what I want to do for you, also before I forget, (laughs) is I want to drop the link here now. So this is the list to join our mailing list so that you can get the information on when tickets go on sale or anything related to that. So you should see that pop up. So definitely want to uh, invite you to that. We're going to be covering everything from finances, financial independence, um, real estate, of course, immigration, the various visas, finding a place. We have a nice speaker lineup that we're putting together so far, but definitely as we start to narrow and iron out most of those details, you'll be hearing it first if you're on the mailing list. Plus, you'll want to take advantage of the early bird pricing. So definitely excited for that. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, Renee, how you doing? How you doing? Carla, are you back from Portugal, Carla? Tanisia's in the house. Hey, 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 how you doing? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Trying something different with my hair. Trying something different, y'all. All right. So without further ado, want to welcome, like I said, a friend of ours, right? And a member of our Black Sickle Passport community. We are going to, <clears throat> excuse me, welcome Miss Lynette my co-conspirator when I'm in Portugal. <laughs> hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank oh, you. my goodness. I'm excited, first of all, because like I think this is our third live together. Yes. But this is the first one where I think we're talking about something so deeply personal. So first, I want to thank you for being so transparent and willing to share your medical tourism journey with our audience. Um, As I was telling people before, you know, I brought you on is, you know, you living in America, (laughs) healthcare, unlike the rest of the world, is expensive, expensive. And ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculously expensive. So much so (laughs) that I will admit I have delayed treatment because it's like, well, damn, I don't know. It's not even like you know the number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like mm-hmm. whatever I'm thinking is probably bigger than what I can afford right now, right? Yes. Or you've gotten it and then gotten surprise bills. Mm-hmm. And I think because of the internet and all of this information that we have, at our fingertips, we're starting to realize that A, <laughs> this ain't the only game in town, this being mm-hmm. America, and B, <laughs> that medical, you know, getting medical care in other countries is either free or low cost and at or better treatment. Mm-hmm. So with that, let me uh, ask you, like, what was going on that made you... Go to Colombia. Oh, Colombia, Colombia, Colombia. Te amo, te amo, Colombia. So first off, I just want to say before I dive into this, thank you so much for having the courage, because I love your story. You began this in 2020 in your closet. It was Mm -hmm. a dream. It was a blip in your mind. And look how far you've gone and how far you have yet to go. So thank you for giving us this platform to be able to share our stories. And I'm living my life more intentionally. So I set a couple of intentions. Number one, I haven't seen my Instagram community for a long time because I've been battling some health stuff. So I wanna kinda welcome them. Hello everybody and catch them up to where I've been. And then also I wanna share the pros and cons of medical tourism, because there are some. The Mm -hmm. pro is the price, but there are some things to consider. (laughs) That's what that con is for, consideration. (laughs) So I want to definitely do that. And number three, I want to talk just a little bit about womb health for those Mm -hmm. who have wombs and those who love those that have wombs. So those are my three intentions. And so I want to just put them out in the air to the universe and to the ether, to the knowingness, so we can definitely have those ever present in our mind and our time together. And so getting back to my story, what made me go to Colombia was a couple of different reasons. So 
anyone who knows me, y'all know I'm obsessed with my teeth. <laughs> I floss. You have beautiful <laughs> teeth. <laughs> oh, thank you. I floss after every meal I brush. I only drink water and tea. I'm obsessed. So, but oddly enough, due to stress, you know, and other different things in life, I clench my jaw when I sleep. And I had moved back home in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I love my family, but they try to turn me every way but a loose, honey. I'm from the South. I'm from the country. So y'all going to hear some colloquialism when we're together. But anyway, so I was clenching my jaw really badly. So I cracked th this tooth that had already had a, um, mm -hmm. a root canal on it and a crown. And then I cracked this one so bad it had to be extracted. Oh, mm -hmm. it was terrible. So to get the implant place for this one, y'all, mm -hmm. it was three racks. I went ahead and paid $3,000 for that. Yeah. But that was just the implant installation, honey. That wasn't the crown, the abutment. That was nothing else, Krishan. Right? And wait, so wait, I went. <laughs> wait a minute. You can't say that and then be like, oh, and it's 3000 <laughs> Well, that's what they quoted me. But see, here's the thing. What happened was they misquoted me one time. And then the day before the procedure, they were like, oh, um, a new nurse had given you the number because I'm here in Georgia. The, a new nurse had quoted you the rate. And it's really three thousand dollars. I said, well, that new nurse told me fifteen seventy five. So that's what I'm going to pay. Right. Y'all know I cut up. So get used to it. So. I went ahead and paid the reduced price of whatever, and I still owe them a balance. Yep, I do. We keeping it real here with this family. And so that was just for the actual screw and the implant. That's it. Just a screw, no tooth. So walking around with just a... Yes. A place for a, a tooth to potentially land. Where you When you met me, I was chewing on a screw. Chewing on a screw. What? Chewing on a screw. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And 1500 for a screw. Make that you make got it. Make that make oh, oh, it won't. It defies all logic, all rationale, all everything. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a trip to the exact opposite side of my mouth, to this <laughs> other tooth. <laughs> when I was in my mid-20s, you know, about two years ago. Anyway, when I was in my mid-20s, I ate an oyster, and it had a pearl in it, and it cracked this tooth. Got my hand to God, cracked this tooth. So I had to get a root canal because they said it was, you know, it damaged it because it hurt for a while. And then after a couple years later, they just they determined the integrity of the tooth had been compromised. So they need to replace it. So I had gotten a crown put on it. Um, the crown fell off two to three different times because it was wasn't placed properly. So maybe a month after I had this done to this tooth, this other crown, the last temp crown that was shoddily put on decided I'm out of here. You know, it's bigger things for me to do. I'm going to go live my life. Right. I got left. Live my life. <laughs> right. <I need>. Leave. <laughs> yeah, it was like deuces. I need to see the rest I, of the world. Yeah. I'm in this mouth. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> right. <just not> there. <laughs> that's it, Krishana. He was like, need you in the crossroads. We won't be lonely. So I'm without both of these teeth, right? So I'm chewing. I'm making it work. I, you know, I'm taking care of the ones I do have. So I knew after seeing what, you know, the additional amount that they wanted to charge for this one, the abutment and the actual crown piece, because the abutment's this, and then they put the crown on top. And then seeing what the replacement crown was for this. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think I got a quote on this one in as soon as maybe April. And so the guy was like, yeah, I'll do it for you. Because by this time, the tooth had deteriorated and there was some breakdown of the integrity of the, of the tooth. So he was like, I'll do it for you for $9.50. I said, meet you at the crossroads. You won't be long. $9.50. Right, yeah. girl. <laughs> right, Krishan. I said, mm -mm. so my sorority sister, who's probably either here or watching the live, she was in Colombia and she was like, girl, come over here. Yes, Krishan. <laughs> oh. 9.50. She said, girl, come over here. Say it again. That's how it happened. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then the womb health part, we can kind of get to that in another part. That's a whole... Yeah, let's, let's, let's stay on the yeah. teeth. I, let's I, stay I, on the teeth. Yeah. I don't want to get it confused because it's a whole nother thing. So oh. with regards to that, when I, I went to my travel resources and I had a credit with JetBlue mm -hmm. and I went and I just looked at tickets like in, you know, in May and it was cheaper for me to go there the whole ticket and everything costs less than the quote for this one tooth. Oh 
I'll say that again for all y'all in the audience. And hello again, by the way. <laughs> the, the, the cost of my ticket to go to an international destination was less than this tooth quote that I got of $950. Now, to be clear, he needed to put the crown on on the tooth, but also some reconstructing needed to be mm -hmm. done. So that's very important. I want to circle back to that. I'm not just saying he said, oh, we're going to put a crown on it and hope you, all right. You know, he didn't. Mm -hmm. So nine nine fifty, and then the abutment and everything like that. I think the latest quote I had gotten for that was 1500 So now we're already sitting at a little under 2500 for everything. And, and the whole cost of my trip to Colombia was less than that. Everything. I'm talking about food, transportation. I stayed one week with my soror and then, and I'm a Zeta, if anyone is wondering. And then I spent another week at a hotel. All of that, amazing meals, food, experiences. We went and had a spa day. All of that was less than the cost of what these would have been. I need to let that sink in because mm -hmm. some people work and they opt out of, you know, medical uh, dental care, right? Because dental is really an add-on, right? You have your healthcare line and off, right. off the time you have your dental. If you're self-employed, right, you're getting a way different number than somebody who is working a W-2, right? And so your health plan options are different. The cost structure is different. And again, you know, I talked about like delaying treatment. People delay dental care because it's cost prohibitive. And once you start getting infections and things like that, that can have a whole downstream effect. And so it's important to, to hear this story. And for those that are watching, like understand <laughs> that this system is broken in a big way that it's cheaper to fly to another country to get care than it is to get it in your own country for two teeth. And adults have what, 30 something to eat, something like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> Speak on it. Right. Like. It boggles the mind. Truthfully. It makes no sense. Mm -mm, no. No sense. None. Not at all. It doesn't. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now you decided, okay, your source says, hey, come to Colombia, right? You're going to go to Medellin, right? Yes. And how did you go about finding a dentist to help you? Like, does yes. that big thing too? And I also want to say like, you know, for those of you who have questions, definitely feel free. We want to make sure <laughs> we're getting to those because Lynette and I talk all the time, so we can just <laughs> go. <laughs> but put a cue, I'm going to steal something from Elise. You put a cue if you don't mind in front of your question. So it makes it easier for us to see. And then um, we can definitely circle back. I see some of them and I'm highlighting them as, they, as I see them. But Perfect. for the rest, um, if you don't mind doing that. That would be amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. And to answer your question, I have some cards. Like I told you, I was like, yes. girl, I'm going to be taking notes because I want this to be educational. Yes. So step one, to answer your question, how I found out about where I was going to go in Medellin, Colombia, I research. I'm a writer, mm -hmm. in case you all don't know, but I research everything heavily. That That's what my job entails. So I first I get quiet. I, I pray and I be led by the spirit because I, I need to know, you know, because, oh, let me also mention this. Your girl doesn't speak Spanish, but a couple different words. I picked it up over there. Yeah. So this was very important. So I researched. <laughs> you said what? Google Translate. <laughs> yes, exactly. So a couple of different ways that I went about this. So number one, I did research on my own and I utilize keywords with the work that I do. So SEO keywords, um, I, I did, you know, a colleague and, you know, actually my um, brother friend, I did his website and my SEO is making his company do very well. It's already doing well because he's amazing. But anyway, I use SEO keyword mentality when I search for stuff myself. And what I say, when I say that, what I mean is search for English speaking, high ranking dentists in Medellin, Colombia. So that's what I, I would do. You know, because I am I believe in intentionality to the T. I wanted someone English speaking. I wanted them to be high rating. And then I didn't want them to be 
um, just because they know we're coming over as Americans, right? Their prices are, you know, comparable to the U.S.'s because people could do that because they think that people yeah. won't go deep enough to find someone that's going to have good rates. Mm -hmm. So I'd use those keywords to find for my dentist. And I did the same thing for the gyno, but we're going to be talking about womb health later, but just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And then number two, I encourage you to reach into the networks of people that you know. My sorority sister is a member of like four or five different WhatsApps groups. I, I don't have the bandwidth. Like I love being a part of Blacks and Global Passport because we are a tight knit community. So like all those notifications she gets from people because they're doing so many fun things. I'm like, ding, ding. every time it goes off, my anxiety would be like, <laughs> so she, I asked her to add, <laughs> ask for me within her networks of, you know, any recommendations. So that way I was beginning to accumulate a list. So mm -hmm. this is a, part of, a very important part of the story. She gave me the name of this Afro-Latina um, dentist. She was beautiful, beautiful woman. So we made a tentative appointment and I used Google Translate within WhatsApp to communicate with her. So we made an appointment. Yeah, I told her what I needed, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so we were like set. And this was before I even got on the plane, because that's how organized I like to be. I, I Y'all, I don't play with it. I don't yeah. play with it. If y'all want to talk about it, y'all need some help with it. I, I don't mind giving some time because I want to make sure y'all get this right. So I did that for the dentist. Then when it comes to the guy, no, it got a little tricky. They mm -hmm. asked for my passport number in the course of conversation in WhatsApp. I said, no, no, no. I went ahead and blocked them. <laughs> I figured God would show me something better when the time came. Yeah. So that's just kind of where I was. And so, so that was that. So that was step one. Do you have any questions about that before I get to step two? Because, you know, I got a list. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at, we do have some, I think we are going to go, let's see, Craig asked, so is Lynette in the medical tourism business? No, she's a writer, but yeah. I mean, after this live, she might. <laughs> Might be, because I know what to look for, Mr. Craig. And shout out, you're in Philly. My brother friend is in Philly as well. Thank you for asking. Nope. But maybe, Craig, you might have given me something. See how the you know? Lord just plant some stuff. Thank you, Craig. Yes, <laughs> yes. And then the, the we got to how much. Um, Karen, that's doing? Karen, right? Yes. Yes, Karen, I'm coming. I'm getting there, Karen. Just give me a <laughs> second. So step two, I want to tell y'all really quickly is, Research the region of where you're going to be. And I hope I get this right. Mm -hmm. If anyone is from Colombia, please correct me. I'm, I, I don't mind being told right, but I believe I wrote it down correctly. So Medellin, Medellin is the capital of Antigua, which is the department, kind of like a state, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, as Atlanta is to Georgia, that's how Medellin mm -hmm. is to Antigua. So within that, though, think of like New York and Jersey. It has different boroughs and neighborhoods, even no matter where you are, the different yeah. boroughs. I was in El Poblado. OK, mm -hmm. so when I got to Colombia, the beautiful Afro-Latina dentist was in a whole nother like neighborhood that was far. No matter of fact, she was in a whole nother department, another state. So, wow. yes. Yeah, so we begin all these details began, began to come out as mm -hmm. I began to t talk to her. And I was like, oh, and then I'm skipping ahead of myself. I told her what I needed, but she wasn't too sure if she had the right part to put ah. the implant and the abutment. So we'll get into that later. But all these different details came out. So had I not done my research before I got on that plane, I would have been up to her office like, hey, I'm ready. And yeah. she would have been like, you know, and then no one really spoke English. The one person they had that spoke English, I think was on vacation. So by the time I got Ooh. there, it was, yeah, it was just, it just didn't work out. So I wish them on my, you know, I wish them well and I moved to my next person. So remember we talked about the two different ways of research. So my sorority sister gave me a name. That lady was so cool. She's in a whole nother state as well. Ooh. So I had to cancel again. So I got still, I got quiet and I said, I mm -hmm. need to find a place. So I used those keywords and I mm -hmm. found an amazing dentist and, and I will provide the information with them, but I'm in the talks of making sure that we set up something so they take care of our people when I refer them. So y'all be patient with me, but I really will. And I'll give Krishan the information and she can update it underneath this video. But it was amazing. They were extremely fluent in English. Oh, yay. It, yes, it was just she she asked me ahead of time to give her the information for 
the implant. I got it from the dentist. I called the dentist back in um, here in Atlanta. They emailed it to me. I had all that information. I presented it to her. And when I get there, she tells me I'm going to need a total of three or four appointments. I can't even remember at this time because she looked at the teeth. She was that thorough. I've never had a thorough review of my teeth like that in my life. Wow. Thorough. You did that once you were there? Yes. Once I went ahead and booked an appointment with yeah. her and I had the actual consult with her, who, mm -hmm. the dentist I decided to go with. And she was so thorough with the exam, Krishan. It was like I knew I was in the right place. And the yeah. place was beautiful. Like it, it smelled amazingly. The customer service was amazing. They they corresponded with me via WhatsApp immaculately. Mm -hmm. They were articulate, timely. I knew everything ahead of time. Like, okay, um, Miss Lynette, we got you scheduled for this date and time, for this, da, da, da. Because when she saw this too, she was like, oh, she said, I have to reconstruct it because it had been a good little while. And yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's my dental story in a nutshell. If I skip some parts, please look, bring it back so I can <laughs> share it. Did you have to bring like any x-rays or any other records for them? Or did you just go off of hey, this is what the issue is. I have this and this is what needs to be done. I just told them what it was because they saw from, you know, because of my love for my teeth, she was like, you have a great self-care regimen at home or home care, excuse me, is what they would call it. I call it self-care. That's a Freudian slip. Mm -hmm. But she was like, I can see everything that you need. Once she understood what the implant was and the piece mm -hmm. that needed to be on top, the two pieces, and she could see this. So there was even no need to really do any sort of x-ray because there was no extraction that would be needed. There was no internal damage of the tooth. Um, but everything that I did personally have, I gave to them. And so the last dental visit I had, I told her what he said. And I also could have pulled up the form, which leads me to my step number. I'm going to skip ahead. Is step number five is prep. prep mm -hmm. Preparation for when you make your trip. Bring every single thing that you have. Even if you think it doesn't make any sense, if it's a receipt, it may have something on there. They can read the code name of how it was coded, the procedure, and then it can help them help you. So bring every single thing that you have. Make digital copies if you don't feel like being in the physical copy, but x-rays, um, reports, summary reports, anything. Bring what you have so they can see it to help you. Wow. And so let me just go back a little bit because you said there were like four, uh, you talked about the thorough exam and there were four appointments. So when you booked your time in Medellin, did you think about like, oh, I need to be here? Did you ask like, oh, how long do I need to be in the country or any aftercare? Because remember, I didn't find her till I was in Colombia. So there's oh, no wow. way I could have prepared. No way. So when she first met me, like she looked in my teeth and then she was like, she sent me downstairs with a bottle of water and then she came back, honey, the mask was off. We went outside to talk in this beautiful open air, <laughs> like courtyard. And she looked at me, she was like, I need you here. She was like, can you extend your trip? I need you for at least four visits. Yeah, because that's what it was. It was total four. And so I was like... Okay. Because I plan just in case that goes back yeah. to the research part. I had an extra hotel because you just don't hmm. know when it comes to your health. So yeah. I had an extra hotel on deck. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So that's how I was able to extend what she told me. Yeah. And then the, these visits, were they over the course of the same week or several weeks or how did that work? It was several weeks. So I got in Colombia May 3rd. I think my appointment, my first one with her was on May... I think that it was that Friday. And then after that, it was like kind of every four to five days, I would go to the office. And it was so mm. cheap and so close, coincidentally, to where my soror was staying. So the Ubers were like a dollar and 24 cents. Y'all, I can't stress to you how much this was. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It was a dollar and 24 cents. And the Uber drivers, just sidebar hysterical, because I called the older Colombian men, I called them Pop Pop. One time Pop Pop came to pick me up. I knew he was older because he stopped in the middle of the intersection and he paid it no attention. He was like looking all over the wheel. He was adorable. <laughs> but anyway, $1.24 for the Uber. So it didn't really matter for me to go back and forth, back and forth. But I had to go a couple of different times. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and Kay Renee, thanks for uh, reminding folks. Please hit the like button. Yay. Yay please do. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Kay Renee. Um. Was Carla, she just hey, good with the anesthesia? Hey, Carla. Yes, she was. Carla, I'm glad you asked that because 
normally it seems like dentists they you know because they can't feel when that needle goes in but can't we when they put that anesthesia Ooh. into the gum it, it's a different feeling so they have this <laughs> girl they sure do they're like and one two don't even wait for three we're gonna go so <laughs> so carla they put a massager in my mouth to massage my tongue oh girl this was real they put a massager to massage my cheek and then she massaged me with her hand she was like okay take it easy deep breathing deep breathing open wide for me open wide and then she inserted the anesthesia so it was amazing. And 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 I have a funny story about that later, about me going to the mall afterwards. Because you <laughs> but anyway, we'll stay on track. I think I could do anything. I could right. eat. <laughs> right. Corn on the cob. Girl. Girl. And so I was, but anyway, so it was it was okay with the massager and her hand massage, and she yeah. sprayed essential oils so I would be calm. And then I have excessively dryness in my lips, so she put Vaselina um, in Espanol. She kept putting Vaseline. Well, her assistant kept putting Vaseline mm -hmm. on my lips, and and then there was a massager they placed on my eyes that had me just be calm and relaxed. Y'all, it was it was truly a blessing. And that's why when again, I want to repeat because I don't want people to be like, Lynette, Krishan, where's the information? When the doctor and I are in conversation, but I want to make sure that, you know, she's taking we were taking care of when we refer different people to her, yeah. you know, different little thing. Yeah. So just just hold tight for it. But I'm going to give you that information. And the English that they speak is impeccable. Everyone was so nice to me. Wow. It was amazing. I have no. I place. definitely am going to be the one asking for that information as well because yeah. we have not had a conversation. So, for those of y'all watching live in the replay, uh, so I'm hearing this real time with you. Like Lynette and I have conversed while she was in Colombia, but I did not know the magnitude, right? So a lot of this mm -hmm. is just like me taking it in. But Lynette, so I have, you know, you and I have talked, and I don't mind sharing this, right? Because uh, we'll get into it in the course of our conversation. So I've been dealing with, you know, um, and some of you have talked about it on the lives recently. Yeah. Uh, I've been dealing with ringing in my ears, right? Yeah. So it, if it's bad, I lose my train of thought, the, the, you know, the whole bit. So I didn't tell you this. So a couple weeks ago, um, I've been going to the doctors rid ridiculous amount of times this year, which pisses me off because this yeah. is my black a year, right? I already right. had my budget for all the things that I needed to do this year. And then it's one freaking calamity after another, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, I got ringing in my ear. Then they're like, oh, let's do a sleep study, right? 600 for that. Oh, you got sleep apnea. Okay, you need a CPAP machine, right? This is holding CPAP machine. When can I get the CPAP machine? Oh, that's two and a half months. So if you're telling me that I got some shit that if I close my eyes, I might not wake up. And now you're going to tell me it's going to be two and a half. And then you have to rent the machine and da 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 da. And all I'm hearing is cha ching, cha ching, but not when I'm cha ching and cha ching. And like that sound, I don't mind, right? But when it's like this and I'm paying people, when I'm, and I don't have to pay that in Portugal, right? Like, so then my doctor, I go for a physical because I'm trying to get all my stuff done. The only thing else I have to do is some blood work. And I want to get a yellow fever shot before I leave because I know yeah. when I want to go on the continent and I might as well just get all that stuff done while yeah. I'm here. So I still got some stuff to do. My doctor gives me a physical. This was like two and a half weeks ago. Oh, you know what we think might be causing the ring in your ears too is your jaw. Because when you mentioned your jaw clenching, right? So apparently, uh, like I snore really loud. And I have now, they said, like TMJ. So the thought is, this hypothesis is that hopefully once I get the CPAP machine, that hopefully it'll release some of the pressure and this will yeah. stop. But yeah. I also definitely need to get some dental work done mm -hmm. because I have I had braces when I was little or when I was a teenager, lost my retainer, whatever. But I am noticing that my smile and certain things like are getting out of alignment and I have an underbite. And oh. they told me years ago, oh, you're too old to get it fixed because it really needs my jaw needs to be realigned. So they need to break my jaw, reset it. Right. That's one. So I'm like, but it could possibly be done with braces. Now, y'all already know I'm packing up for Portugal. So we're not going down this rabbit hole in the United States. So once you started telling me this story about this 
wonderful woman in Medellin, I may need to have that information so we can figure out how to correct this smile situation I got going <laughs> and maybe give mama a little relief from this ringing in my head because mm-hmm. it's been months and it's mm-hmm. driving me nuts. But this is in this is amazing. Mm-hmm. This is amazing. And I want to say thank you again for just being so transparent and saying. Mm-hmm what your journey has been. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to say to you, cause I don't want us to drive by that. I'm sorry to hear that you're going through that. Cause mm-hmm. it, you know, it, yeah. So definitely I will share that with you and we can do hopefully maybe a little girl's little getaway Ooh. and I'll go with you <laughs> and we can do it together. Cause you will love them. They're amazing. They're punctual, professional, Every all the things that I need. Mm -hmm. And I know you would appreciate them like they have. So I'm super excited to share this information. Y'all don't be mad at me in the comments. Tell us, Lynette. I will. (laughs) Don't be mad because I can see. I was like, look, look at (laughs) Denise. See, look at Denise. I'm coming, Denise. Y'all, I'm coming. Yeah, exactly, Carla. It was. Y'all can make this ring and stop. Then I bring you season six of the show. (laughs) <laughs> for sure we're gonna get that together and and i want to say another thing they they envelope you in kindness and they welcome you they put a blanket over me because Car- carla's saying wow never experienced that at a dental office because it's not a dental office it's an experience it is a dental office mm-hmm. but i'm just saying they promote an experience and i literally am in conversation with the doctor she whatsapped me before i got on because oh. i tried to have this ready today yeah so she's serious and open about meeting because i want to Make sure that you all are taken care of. So, yes, yes. yes. What other questions could I answer? Mm-hmm. So, uh, adult braces or Invisalign? Oh, that's a good question. I'm not too sure. Uh, because, or was that to you? Does that? Does no. That I okay, that's to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what they do is, and 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 Tonicia, I'm glad that you asked this because it brings up another kind of aligning point because the lady that I saw was an oral surgeon, but also there's an on-staff periodontist. So, yeah. So between the two, I'm assuming maybe they could assist with that. But I did notice while I was waiting, they had a big TV in the waiting room and it talked about some braces or alignment, tooth alignment that they do. I didn't quite catch what it was, but they do everything. They do whitening, teeth alignment, extractions. And also what I didn't have time for, because at the at the end of my journey, you all will see why I was just kind of ready to go. But they were going to fit me for a mouth guard because she was like, yeah, she said, I'm, I'm going to replace these teeth, but it does no good if you're going back to clenching. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'll probably go back because I want to work with them exclusively, even if I land somewhere else and other than Colombia at first. I want to work with them exclusively, but they do mouth guards, sleep guards, um, oh, wow. whitening. I don't know if I said, but yeah. So they're amazing. They're full service, Tanisha. And I, I pray that that answered your question. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. That is, that's amazing. Yes. Tanisha, let us know. Aisha. Hi, Aisha. Hi, oh, Aisha. Aisha, thank nervous. you for joining us. Yes. Was I nervous being in the country by myself? Girl, Aisha, you know me for how many years? Girl, I go everywhere. (laughs) Uh, I wasn't nervous at all. But I will say this, because this is an amazing question. Like, (laughs) my sorority sister is going to see this and laugh. But I have never been to a Spanish predominantly speaking country. Never. Wow. So I spoke more French there, honey, than I have when I visit French. (laughs) Because... (laughs) I was defaulting to the other other language that I kind of know. So they were talking to me. I was speaking back in French. And my sorority sister was like, no. You're no, like, we. No, ma'am. <laughs> She's like, no. Because, see, let me tell you about the Colombians, baby. They're like, look, you in Colombia speak it as Espanol. Speak wow. as Espanol. You see what I'm saying? Like, they, yeah. they don't play. They don't. And I love that. So it was a cultural, gritty experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was having to smile, you know, because when people see my natural energy, they're like, OK, she's cool. But they were very patient with me. But that was the only thing that was a disconnect. But I felt mm-hmm. safe in the area where I was because I know safety with Colombia is a concern. 
leads me to another point. I hired a driver when I was there. He didn't drive me over everywhere, but I trusted him. He did a neighborhood tour with me. He was just amazing. His name is Ubaldo, and I will definitely be giving his information as well. He is amazing, but he drove me all over uh, Medellin. He told me, he was like, you want to be here? He was like, and then he listed the places where I don't want to be. So anyway, it made me feel more welcome and more safe mm -hmm. and more comfortable. And my soror was there. I spent a week with her, Aisha, and then when I knew I was going to stay longer, my mama always told me, you never outstay, you're welcome. So I went to another hotel. <laughs> so yeah. when I was there, now that was an adventure. <laughs> I was like this. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. But they were so nice to me at the hotel. They would just laugh when they saw me coming because it was it was pretty bad. My Spanish is it's not poquito, mas poquito. It was, but I picked up some stuff and I met some amazing people. Like yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Let me get back into the. It said, Karen said we gonna have to chat on password. <laughs> we are, we are, Karen, because yes. I miss you too. Join yes. the global passport because this is what we do. We help each other in our community. We have accountability groups. We have a men's group for the men in the community that's led by Michael Ruth from season four. Yes, mm -hmm. um, and we have a. A, a Portugal move to Portugal accountability group because there's like nine or ten of us <laughs> that are moving to Portugal, so we needed to carve out a space to not take from from the rest of the group. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on: workshops, mm -hmm. from expat taxes, you know, you name it. It's in pa it's in passport. It's mm -hmm. in Black School passport. So for y'all that are asking, I will drop the link. You yes. can join Black the Global Passport. Yay! for two weeks for free mm -hmm. and you know peruse see if it is something that you want to do and if you're in there um and i guess it applies regardless of whether you're not in there but you'll see a link although yeah i am closing it down temporarily uh <laughs> the one-on-one -on -one coaching just because i got a pack but <laughs> you'll see a link in there to schedule one-on-one -on -one if you want to so yes, come on in. The yes. weather is nice in passport. <laughs> it is, and I wanted to say this just really quickly um, because I had my passport bursary, I believe in, oh my gosh, I think it was May, yeah. I think Ooh. it's been a year in May because we met in March. So yes. our friend bursary was in March. Yes. Yeah, so I, y'all, I love it. I love the community. Shout out to Malcolm, to Carla. Karen and everyone else who I've forgotten it, but I don't say your name. No, charge it to my heart, not my mind. Charge it to my heart. Y'all know what I mean. My mind, not my heart. Whatever. So, <laughs> but I, I love you, girl. I get it. <laughs> yes, I love it, and everybody's so amazing, and and um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, Nicole said, "I love the Black the global yes. community." I know because Nicole came from Boston. And then oh. we hung out last oh. Friday. Nice. Yeah. And then we ended up outside for five hours. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a Krishan get together. Y'all, let me tell you, when Krishan and I met in Portugal, we were like this. <laughs> we were like, hey, girl. Hey, we lit each other's hair. We liked each other's vibe. We were like this for two days. <laughs> two different occasions. We went everywhere. It was like, yeah. oh, we going to go. I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, see, that's what it's about for me. It's the community. So br to bring it back to Aisha's question, I don't really feel alone because, uh, you know, by extension with my sorority sister, she's in some communities and she's also in, in um, Passport as well. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, you're never really alone with this yeah. community. So I, I highly recommend it to 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 everyone and anyone within the sound of my voice from now yeah. and in the future. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. <laughs> And then Karen wants to know if your new debt into this replace metal feelings. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. That's a good question. You know what? I, I don't think there's anything those two ladies can't do because it's two, mm. two ladies that own it. I don't think there's anything they can't do. And if they can't, they're very honest. Because mm. she came back, when, honey, when she sat me down at the table, I was about to say, look, did she find something? <laughs> but she <laughs> sat me down. The dentist is who I'm referring to. But she she was like, yeah, we need to do this. We need to do that. And also, mm -hmm. I saw, Karen, you asked me about the price. I'm not going to impugn their dignity just yet because I don't know what we're working out for a Black Sick Global um, passport members and also the Black Sick Global community at large. But I will say this to you. The price of getting both of these teeth fixed was 
a little bit over the quote for this one tooth. So I'm gonna say that again. The price of getting both of these teeth fixed was a little bit over the $950 quote that I got. And I was told that the, the prices that they um, quoted me was a little bit higher than the average there, but I paid for the experience. See, I don't mind mm -hmm. giving my money if I know I'm going to be satisfied. And y'all, in just case anyone else is wondering, I've been back for almost a month now. No, no, no. It, it's been about 15 days. Yeah, that I've been back. And um, well, no, excuse me, nine days short of a month. And I haven't experienced any issues. Wow. Um, yeah, because the teeth where where I had the um, hole for the implant, the teeth were starting to do this. So I needed to get the implant in. So it hurt a little bit to make them reshift, ah. but it wasn't even pain. It was just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I haven't had any issues with either teeth since I've been back. Wow. And Craig wants to know, do you live in Colombia? Good question. Yes, that is. Oh, hey, Craig. Very good touring. Hey, Greg. So I am currently in Atlanta, Georgia, but Colombia has made its way up on my list. Colombia yes. has really made its way up on my list. I know, because I was <laughs> like, you were team Portugal. I know. I know. So, like, Deshaun, um, Colombia is hitting the head. No, <laughs> okay. I'm supportive, right? I, yes. I just want to get Black folks out, <laughs> right? Wherever you you say that. Out. <laughs> Say right. that. <laughs> and exactly. And I just want to say th something really quick to Craig. Like the first three days I was there, I was in love with the city because we're it's in the Andes Mountains. I, I don't know what I thought. You know, you don't you have a thought about mm. something until you get there, and then you see it. It is the most breathtakingly beautiful place. I was almost moved to tears. I know y'all know I'm a little dramatic anyway, but I was almost moved to tears of how beautiful the Andes Mountains were. Mm -hmm. And and be careful with the altitude sickness, but maybe that's something we can do offline. I want to stay on track, but maybe someone to type it in the in the questions. Maybe I can come back to it because I really want to say something about the altitude. Mm. It turned me every which way but a loose for a couple wow. of days. But anyway, so it's it's a beautiful tropical place. Like I heard someone say it's a jungle with a city in it. That's what mm -hmm. it is. And it smells amazing. I don't know how every place smells. I don't I don't know what the fragrance was, but it was <laughs> it was just amazing. And and yeah. So I love that yeah. because I think with us in the States, uh, you know, from my own experience, things that we hear about Colombia is negative, right? It's like, oh, you're gonna get kidnapped, the cartel, you know, it's dirty, right? And we see all these movies and actually as I shared on my story yesterday it was more or less in the lens of talking about Mexico but um you know we've been dealing with this air quality situation uh in New York and for two and a half days I was in the house so yesterday was the first clear day which was so grateful since it was baby girl's prom uh and today it's uh the air quality is much better but, uh, you know, there was this orange haze and it smelled like a campfire. It was really hard to breathe. breathe and I don't really have respiratory issues. Um, so, you know, I kept the dog in the house. You know, we worked through <laughs> how to deal with that situation. But all that is to say, it really looked really apocalyptic. And there was a video that someone had uh, done and shared. And it was talking about, like, how when... Uh, American directors, white directors, you know, want to differentiate, uh, especially uh, communities, countries with black and brown people. And it started with um, Soderbergh, where they put mm -hmm. this like hazy lens treatment mm -hmm. that, you know, makes it look like gritty and, you know, like, oh, you're going to be unsafe. And all that does, especially when it's a, a movie about drugs and violence and crime, like, you just become conditioned to think that way. And it's almost like a, a trigger word, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like when you, you're talking about your own experience. And that's why I say, do your research, right? If you're curious about a country, don't just go off of, oh, I heard, because more than likely you heard something that was part of you know, somebody else's propaganda, right? From the dominant culture, if you will. And you have to challenge your own assumptions. Do your due diligence. Ask the right questions of the right people in the right communities. And that's how you'll get to the answer that much faster. Because you have to learn how to face your fears. 
are your fears rooted in reality? More often than not, they're not, right? And so hearing you talk about the beautiful experience you had with getting you know, medical treatment and the Andes Mountains and the smells and all that, that is counter to, I know for me, everything I've ever heard about Colombia, right? And so that's why it's important to get plugged in. Yes, the Cody Nerds. Yay. That's good. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank hey, Jesse. That's my brother. <laughs> hey. Yes. And Craig said he's going to be joining. Yay. Yes, Craig. Craig, do, do. You, you won't regret it. It's super cool. Yeah. Oh, and that, I didn't know this. Like, there's a Caribbean coast. Hmm. Yes. Yes, Craig. Craig. Okay, Craig. You've had some really good questions. It seems like Colombia's in your mind and heart. Book the ticket, Craig. Okay, <laughs> Krishan, I want to give you props really quick, Craig. Hold on. I want to give you props, Krishan, because you told me one day I was just telling you I was having a down day. And you said, girl, book the ticket. <laughs> and I said, yes. Yes, Krishan. Yes, sister friend. Because <laughs> I go into the darkness. <laughs> Yes, I go to the dentist. I was about to say the doctor. Anyway, I went to the dentist and um, I was discouraged from that. And you were like, go ahead, book it, run it. Yeah. Because you didn't know I was discouraged because of that, but I knew. Wow. That, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. I'm doing it to Craig now. I'm paying it forward to Craig. Craig, yes, the Caribbean coast is um, Cartagena. That's the Caribbean coast. And I met a, a, a guy from Cartagena when I was there. He's really cool, Krishan. I should tell him about Passport because he yeah. knows Portuguese. Um, oh, yeah. oh, and English. He's fluent in English. And he's amazing. Um, Jesus, shout out to Jesus. And I also met another friend. I think he's on. His name is Steven. The guys, it, people in Colombia were so sweet to me, the guys and gals. But anyway, but yes. So um, where was I going with this? Uh, to I was talking to, to Craig about something. About oh, what? What's that? Craig was saying that uh, he was talking about the knowing that it has, just learned that it has a yes. coast. Yes. Thank you for that, Krishan and Craig. So when um, Jesus had shown me a video of Cartagena, I was like, it, it was so beautiful. It was like a gut punch. It has uh, beautiful lakes and it's by the ocean, of course, because it's on the coast. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it was just breathtaking. So I was like, okay. So I'm going, because he was like, yeah, you need a friend in Cartagena because he said there are some areas that are a little bit, you know, not as touristic and as friendly. Mm -hmm. And so he was like, yeah, I could help you get around. But that's another thing. Like the Colombian people do not try to sell the dream. Like, oh, it's perfect here. Don't nothing be happening. They're like, no, you can't go in certain spots, but I know where you can and cannot go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just want to put that out to everywhere because everywhere is dangerous. People acting like, you know, just because of the history that Colombia has with Escobar and everything like that, mm -hmm. that that's pervasive throughout the whole society. Could be or could be not, but stay where you know you can stay, and then you should have no issues. Mm -hmm. So that's all I want to say. Yes, and that is a great point too, because Thank we you. can definitely spend a whole another hour talking about all the violence in America and how many countries have warnings for their citizens so that they don't come to the U.S. So, Denise <laughs> <laughs> uh, asks how to be altitude sick. Like was the food good? Ooh, you know, I'm a foodie, so. Yes. And I was rolling my eyes for both of those. Because first off, okay, so Krishan, I don't know if you recall this. I texted Krishan, y'all, one time when I first got there, because we always touch in when each other's traveling to make sure we made it safely. I texted Krishan something that must have been a hieroglyphics. I was just so <laughs> out of it. <laughs> and I reread it. And I was like, Krishan, I'm not high. I just, I didn't know at the time what was wrong with me. I just couldn't get, formulate the words and, and I was just tired and tired. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then my brother, Jesse, was like, girl, you do know how high you are above sea level. And I was like, that's it. I was beginning to feel like nauseous, um, Ooh, just wow. discombobulated and just kind of like, you know how you feel like this? I was just mm -hmm. feeling like that. And then Ubaldo took us up into the mountains. My eyes begin to cross because it's, it's the altitude is just, oh, yeah. It, but anyway, so oh. how you can combat it is. And this made me so happy, which leads me to Tanisha's second question. You can eat a lot of carbohydrates oh. and it gives you fuel and keeps, and also you have to hydrate too. But those two things is what helped me. I don't know, everybody's system is different, but I needed the carbs, I need the strength and the energy. So I ate whatever I want and I lost weight. I didn't start gaining weight till I got back here, but that's a whole nother conversation. So um, there's, you can eat carbohydrates, drink a lot, a lot, a lot of water. 
um, more than like whatever you drink here in the States, go ahead and triple it in Colombia. Mm. Um, don't know if this is relates, but also I want to say this in my mind, make sure you have a lot of good sunscreen. So that as well. And then number four, um, I think it's koa leaf uh, tea because the koa leaf makes cocaine. And so they, they use the leaves for tea and mm -hmm. you can't even bring it back to the States. But while you're there brewing some of that from what I read will help you. I could never find it. I didn't go look for it because I was good with the carbs and the water. Mm -hmm. So, and so that answers that. And Tunisia, the food is a very, very good food, but to answer about the diet that they have, I think it's based on keeping their citizens safe from altitude sickness. That's what I came up with because everything's carb heavy. So I'm yeah. talking about potatoes, bread, mm -hmm. a lot of rice, a lot of beans, but it's eating for them is a passion. It's like a party. Mm -hmm. It's it's just cool. It was just dope. So um, my sorority sister and I would believe it or not go to mall food courts. It, it was overwhelming. They have, you know, everything from like lower end McDonald's and things of that nature to actual little restaurants and, you know, but the food is so good and so cheap. Like if you get over there, like I know Craig was probably thinking about going, I'm willing Craig to go, <laughs> go to chip station. Girl, they have these French fries. Ooh, you were amazing. So <laughs> chip station, <laughs> crepes and waffles. <laughs> There's some amazing places in Colombia, but um, I'll maybe put lift, put that list of good restaurants in passport. But yeah, oh, yeah. so so that's, that's the reason it's it's going to like to yeah. go <laughs> yes. we share, we share. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> so, yep. I hope that answers your question, Tanisha. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Uh, let me go back. And again, I'm just going to have a little reminder. If you could put a Q in front of your question, it just helps me find it faster because I see y'all are talking to each other. I love it. I love it. Uh, yes. Um, cool. Uh, I think we got all the dental questions mm -hmm. done. So I think might be, let's see. Is it womb time, womb health time? <laughs> <laughs> might be. Might be time. Laugh. <laughs> might be time. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna take a few cleansing breaths. Yeah. <sighs> All right, to get into it. All right, so this this part, y'all, is gonna take a little bit of a shift, but y'all stay with me. So, um, so before I begin my womb <laughs> experience, and and I'll define what that means. I want to kind of you know have you all pay attention to this necklace that I have on. It's hand beaded. It's made by some uh, um, some Venezuelan refugees that are in Colombia living on the streets with their kids. It was one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen in my life. So to anyone who's thinking of going and you see these, these beautiful little Venezuelan ladies, they're so teeny. I'm like five, six, almost five, seven. And they're like, they're so cute. They're four, 11, four feet, you know, they're five feet. Some of them are four feet, they're teeny. And they're with their babies, nursing their babies because they've been displaced because Venezuela is so terrible right now. So they're living on the streets, making their wares. Yeah. And so if you see any of them, just, just buy. Like this was only 25 US dollars here, y'all, this is hand beaded. This would be, y'all know how much it would be. Mm. So just bless them and give them a little extra. And mm. just, you know, I just wanted to say that since we're moving into womb care. Yeah. So that's Thank why you. I have this on, you're welcome. And peace and blessings to them. All right, so let's get into this womb care story. So mm -hmm. to any of my followers from Instagram, y'all know I've been MIA. So in June of last year, I got COVID really badly and uh, like a lot of people in the country, and it affected me some pre-existing issues I had with fibroids in my womb. So fibroids, in case you don't know, I'll define them. They're often non-cancerous, but they're calcifications that, you know, just form in uh, a woman's uterus and in her womb. And we don't know, we say scientists don't know why, but they do occur. And it happens predominantly in black women. So this, if this doesn't help you, this may help someone that you know. Okay. So I'll never forget. And, and my brother, Jesse and I were laughing about it to make this a little lighthearted. Afterwards, I just noticed something was off of my cycles. I just wasn't feeling good. So I went to a natural homeopathic sort of place. And I asked this woman, what should I take? She was like, you didn't get the shot. You didn't get the jab, did you? <laughs> and I said, um, yes, ma'am. But I said, I still got COVID. She's like, oh, what did you do? Her face is like this. Oh, what did you do? Now, to be clear, I'm not saying anything. I'm not in favor or against or whatever. I'm just telling you my story. I don't want people to come for me. So <laughs> I was like, ma'am, I, I just took it because I thought it would help. She's like, well, you put yourself in early menopause. She said, and you're barren. 
<laughs> Jesse and I went in. I was like, yes, ma'am. Okay. So I mean, left real quick. <laughs> and so just keep, I tell you that story because it has some rel relevance. I just went on through life and um, I just noticed progressively I was feeling worse. I was fatigued all the time, um, hormonal imbalance. And, and fellas, if your lady is, you know, more neurotic or more angrier or more aggressive than usual, I've read in my studies that I'm doing to create this product um, for women about um, hormonal imbalance and health based off my experiences. What I've read is that hormones can do that. It can make you assertive and aggressive. I woke up one night, Krishan, and the thoughts that were going through my mind, you're crazy, you're stupid. As fuck. All these different thoughts were going through my mind. I said, God, I need you. I, something's wrong. So I found a resource and I'm going to share the information. Oh, good in the course that I make that, that helped me. And I want to help other women, but it was a hormonal imbalance. And so as time began to go on, I went to my gyno and she was like, yeah, something's going on. Let's order you an ultrasound. So that brings me back to the, the womb part of this medical tourism part. So the ultrasound after my insurance would be a 750, no, excuse me, $650 responsibility for me to pay for just the ultrasound. I said, I've had it. I was like, I, I can't do it. I've had to have ultrasounds off and on, off and on for years because mm -hmm. my first fibroid was found when I was 27, about three, oh. three years ago, <clears throat> three years ago. No, I'm joking, but some years ago it was found. So I was like, I'm done. So I was like, when I'm in Colombia getting my teeth done, I'll do that as well. So I asked my sorority sister after the one guy I know that I found had fallen through because mm -hmm. they wanted my passport number. And then the other person, we just weren't on the same page. I asked my sorority sister, asked their network, her network, and a name came back to me. And it was a woman. She spoke immaculate, amazing English. So I made an appointment with her assistant. And then she saw me and she went ahead right then and there did the, the, the ultrasound, the one where they use the um, machine and it goes inside, not the topical one. Oh, so yeah. she saw it and she was like, your uterus is filled with fibroids. <gasps> she was like, oh my gosh. She was like, yeah, you have quite a bit of fibroids. And then she said, there's a cyst in your ovary. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And she was like, I need to get order for you a more sophisticated ultrasound, mm -hmm. one with contrast, so I can get a clear picture of what's truly going on. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, she said, I'm going to recommend you to a specialist. He also speaks English as well. And so she said, don't worry, because I start crying at this point, because I knew I wasn't going crazy. I knew something was wrong or whatever. And so she said at the time that the two fibroids that I have were in six, six centimeters or something like that. So I was like, and then also the, the cyst in my ovary was too. So she, she told me that she, she did say this. She was like, the specialist is going to do a contrast ultrasound with you. It's going to be painful. But she gave me some pain meds. She was like, it's going to be pretty painful. So I'm like, I'm a G. You know, I say to myself, I'm going to be good, whatever. So they gave me a referral. I paid them instead of $650, $85 for the visit. Yeah, you heard right. And I was on my way. So a couple of days later, um, the other office contacted me. We set up a time. They told me the medicine that I needed to get before the, the ultrasound with contrast. Now, my brother, my friend brother is, you know, been in the medical industry for years. So I asked him, I said, is this normal? Uh, ultrasound contrast? He was like, no, that doesn't sound like to me. But he was like, just do it. Because he always tells me, just follow the medical advice you're given. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. So the day comes of the procedure, y'all, I had a praise and worship in the hotel. I'm listening to Kirk Franklin, and it was just something that my spirit led me to. I'm, I mean, I'm crying. You know, it was just, I just felt like I needed that building up of strength, mm -hmm. okay? And so that brings me to my next couple of uh, tips, because no matter what you're having done, bring a friend. Because my Sora asked me, she was like, do you want me to come with you? And I was like, um, no, I think I'll be okay. And in hindsight, I want to add to that. If you can't get a friend, hire a translator, somebody come with you. Because mm. the people that speak English is like me speaking Spanish, really slow. He kept telling me, well, okay, let me back up. Let me not skip. So I come into the office. It's beautiful. It's, it's located in a um, large um, office building. That's what their hotel, their hospitals, excuse me, look like. So I go in there and he's a beautiful man, still great green eyes, just really nice. And then I began talking to him and I talk fast normally. So to a native non-English speaker, I know he was like, so he was like, <laughs> oh, go slow. And so I was having to speak like this. 
Okay. And he would then ask me to define words for him. So he spoke English, but he didn't speak English, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So he tells me the procedure that we're going to have. He said, it's going to be kind of painful. And I'm like, well, y'all keep telling me this. What makes it painful? He was like, just the injection of the contrast. So we go, he, he lets me change. I put on my gown and I come out. There's a big monitor so I can see everything he's doing. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then in comes Maria. She's a nurse. She was helping me. So I get on the table. I'm like still thinking this ain't going to be nothing. This is just an ultrasound contrast. So I get into the steps and everything. And then they set up the contrast because he did the first normal ultrasound to look at the existing fibroids mm -hmm. and everything. And then they do the, get the coil and all this, whatever stuff they need for the other contrast. Y'all, they put that contrast in me. It, it felt like someone, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this in the comments. Like if I get cut, like when I got this other two done first, like I, my teeth start start to chatter. I don't know, my body doesn't like different things. So I, so I got, freezing cold and my teeth begin to chatter. And then I get this pressure, y'all. It feels like someone has a steel tooth, tooth, steel tooth, wow, a steel toed boot and they're on in my uterus. It was a pain Ooh. and it began to intensify, intensify. And I was like, are you done yet? I'm crying, took my glasses off. I'm like, are you done yet? And then I had the overwhelming need to, to use, to pass, um, what to do and number two to use the restroom it was pressure yeah and so he was like hold on we're almost there almost there and then he was like oh i see what i needed to see so it, it, i was like you you gotta stop i couldn't take it it was just so painful so he takes everything out of me and then i was like banyos por favor i asked could i go to the bathroom he was like sure sure y'all i go into that bathroom i'll spare you some details but i sit down and things just everything just calms down comes down and the pain is still intensifying in the left part of my pelvis. So it's like this oh at this gosh. point. It's like this at this point. And then they knock on the door. Lynette, do you need anything? Help. Right, I'm in distress. <laughs> you the man. You the man. man. Yes, see, I should have known that word. So I'm in distress at this point. My teeth are still chattering and I'm, I'm, I'm talking like this. I'm working myself up. Like something was just going wrong. And so I said, I said, I'm not doing too well. They were like, yeah, we know it's painful. I was like, no. And they, I couldn't communicate well enough for them, nor they could understand. So this brings me into the next point. Hire a translator. I said it a couple minutes ago. Hire a translator if you can't yeah. get a friend to go with you. Hire somebody. So at that point, I'm I'm praying. I, I audibly said, God, I need you because these folks don't have me. I need you. And so I continue to use the restroom. And then I look down. I see the floor. I'm like, oh, the floor looks nice. I think I'll go there. <laughs> so after minutes and minutes. Well, no, let me back up. Before I did that, I told him, I he he came to check on me, the doctor, and I was like, he said, do you need anything again? I said, I need a pain pill, pain pill. So he gives me a pill, and then after I take that, a little calm happens, but I still feel like ter terrible. So the floor is looking like my lover's arms. The floor is looking comfortable. I'm like, I lay down on the floor, and then I begin to feel it. Mm. I'm, I'm fading. <gasps> yeah, so I knock on the door. And I love Maria, I don't know her last name. She said, no, 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 Lynette, no, 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 no. She grabs my feet and then she starts shaking me, getting blood to rush back into my head because I was about to pass out and I couldn't even talk to them. So I knocked on the door. So she's like, no, 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 Lynette, no, no, no. And so she's shaking me, shaking me, shaking me. And then she brings some smelling salts. So I smell it two times. Mm -hmm. Then my body begins to lurch, yeah. like it wants to, 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 to vomit. And I'm just uncontrollably doing this. I know if y'all see this later, it's, it's not funny now in the moment, but it will be, never mind. But anyway, so I'm going like this. And then she's like, do you need to throw up? I could tell, she and I could communicate, even though I didn't know her language, we were right here. And I was like, it won't come up because something told me not to eat heavy. So I just had uh. something light before I went. So anyway, I'm gonna land this plane, y'all. I'm coming, I'm a storyteller, <laughs> I write. So this is what I do, so bear with me. So after I do that, I call, I call every because the doctor's like, do you have someone you could call? And I'm like, sir, you don't want to call 911? I guess not. So um, I'm like, I'm gonna call. I call everybody in my phone. I, nobody would answer. So I called on God again. And then my brother, who's been in the medical industry, he calls me. Jesse calls me. He's like, hey, what's going on? I saw, I'm sorry, I missed your call. I said, D -d 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 -d. I'm talking like this because I'm still sh shivering that much. I said, Jesse, something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. He was like, what did they give you? Because he's so calm. You know, this is nothing to him. He's in medical. Industry. He's like, what did they give you? And so I know Roja is red or Rojo, excuse me. <laughs> Rojo is red in Spanish. So the pill box the man had given me was red. So I was like, sir, I need the pill. I need to tell my friend. And so he was like, 
Because at this time, his face is white as a sheet. He doesn't know what's going on or what to do. And so I said, the, the ro, rojo, rojo. And so he said, oh, so I tell Jesse the name. He's like, hmm. He was like, tell me how else you feel. And so I was like, I had the number two so badly. He was like, ah, he's like, okay. He said, don't you leave until you feel better. And if you need them to call somebody else for you, he said, do it and call me as soon as you leave. He said, but don't you leave until you feel better. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And then Maria said, she came to me in, in our secret language that we as women shared. She was like, do you want me to help put on your clothes? Because y'all, there was stuff in the toilet and I was on the floor from the bottom down, nothing on. Wow. And she was going to help me with my dignity and put my clothes on. That's why I love women. We got each other. Yeah. We got each other. So anyway, long story short, I tell her no, because I'm starting hearing Jesse's voice helped me. And then God, you know, God always had me from the beginning. So I began to calm down. I begin to calm down, but that pain is still in my pelvis. But now it's like this. And I told him, I was like, it feels like somebody stabbing me. And he was like, but they're not. Mm. He didn't get it because, you know, it was a language barrier. So bring that translator. I sit down at his desk. He tells me he's discovered a polyp. That's probably, yeah. So he was like, you would need to have all of this removed, but the gynecologist will call you back. I guess after whatever happened in that room, the gynecologist was like, nah, I'm straight. <laughs> Miss Thing ain't called me today. Baby, if she called me, so did President Obama. She was, <laughs> she was like, I'm good. So later when I called Jesse, he told me, he was like, what happened was you had an allergic reaction to the contrast. And he didn't know, he'd never seen it. The contrast liquid yeah. that he inserted. He was like, the doctor didn't know because he'd never seen that before. So that's what happened to you. And he was like, I'm not going to tell you how bad it could have been, but let's just say, thank God it wasn't. So, wow. yes, I know that was like 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But I want to. It's important to talk, and I'm glad you went through all the symptomatology that was happening to you yeah. and being descriptive because that person that's either had something experienced and didn't know and said that it was an allergic reaction, right? They have to have another procedure that requires contrast. We may not make the connection that, hey, I'm allergic to that. I need to convey that to my healthcare provider. Or like your point, they're considering medical tourism in a country that, you know, English is not their dominant language, first language, to think, hey, maybe I should have a medical concierge or someone who can communicate on my behalf. Because to your point, and you spelled it out beautifully, is like, the person that was there while they did speak English, it's like you're, they may be speaking, you're talking about one procedure and, and whatever that means, you know, in, in, in English. And to them, they may not have that grasp of the language because those are words that they don't interact with on a daily basis. It just takes a little bit of a learning curve. Um, but yeah, contrast is no joke. I had a, a contrast for something, I think, similarly related um, a couple of years ago and I had to have an MRI or something and I had never had contrast before. I think it was an MRI because I remember they put me in the machine and were like, oh, contrast. And same like you, right? Independent. I got this. The place is just down the street from my house. I, you know, dropped my daughter off for school, pull the car in. Yeah, I'll be back home like 15, 20 minutes get in there. They put me in the tube to put the little thing in there. Different was I felt like I was about to die. Like I felt like my blood pressure just dropped and bottomed out. I felt this real urge to pee on myself because I know they told me like, hey, you know, you might feel like you got to pee on yourself. Okay. Had that in my head. Y'all didn't tell me I was going to feel like I was having a heart attack. <laughs> And I was dying. So they're talking to me and I'm just like, how? Like, I'm, am I going to die? And all the panic, right? All the panic, like mm -hmm. you must have experienced. Like, did I make the right decision? Is somebody noticing that I might be in distress? Like, your mind just starts going, mm -hmm. like, in all different directions. And if anybody's had a similar experience, you know, you feel comfortable with sharing it. But that scared the bejesus out of me. Like, I never, if somebody says the word contrast, no, no, no. We're going to have to figure out how to do this another way because I never want to experience that ever again in life. Like it was scary as hell. 
And then got I got up and I was like, I, and I remember I needed help getting off the table. Mm. And then crazily enough, because again, I only live like down the street. I drove myself home. You know, oh, it's just like, I was like, what? Sometimes we just, independence, I'm all for it and being independent. But you know what? And I think I talked about it towards the end of last season's episode is it can be a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Because you can talk yourself into things and like, I got this. No, you don't, boo. Ask for help. <laughs> I agree. That is a sign of strength. And I that agree. is why conversations are so important because mm -hmm. we are helping each other, right? Because we're validating our own experience, but we're also helping the people that are watching live and replay because somebody else might be dealing with fibroids. And while medical doctors say they don't know why we're over indexing as black people and black females, well, guess what? If we've had anything like a relaxer or a text mm -hmm. lax or a jerry curl, whatever, right? right. Depending on how old you are and what was going on around at that time, um, those have endocrine blockers, right? Endocrine, mm -hmm. endocrine disruptors. And I had a hysterectomy, a partial hysterectomy in 2018 and uh, had a fibroid nine and multiple uh, nine centimeters. So the size of a newborn's head, my daughter's about to turn 18. My son's about to turn 23. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, <I'm laughs> let me not be crass. I'll be good. <laughs> we'll do that offline. But <laughs> all that is to say, <laughs> there should not be something growing in my body that size anymore. And so they took it out, right, and left my ovaries. And then last year, and I did talk about this in the beginning, I think, or towards the end of last season, right? Mm -hmm. This was April. Mm -hmm. No, it was, no, it was February. I think it was February. Yes, it was February-ish. Of that's right, it was February because I was just like, am I still going to be able to go to Portugal? <laughs> I remember mm -hmm. that when I was coming out. Yeah, and I remember. I was like in the house, and I started having cramps, mm -hmm. and. It's so weird because I remember when I had, before I had the hysterectomy, I'm going back and forth in time, but I remember, uh, and it goes back to delaying medical treatment for maybe a year or so before I wound up getting to the point where I needed medical intervention for uh, the hysterectomy. I remember waking up in the morning, you know how you wake up in the morning, your, your belly is empty, right? So your stomach is flatter. And I would have this big old bump <laughs> and I would rub it. <laughs> Like, not thinking like, hey, maybe we should go get this checked out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I got my mammogram and everything else coming in October. Like, I was like, I could wait till then. Dismissing it. Dismissing mm. it. And that's with, quote unquote, good health insurance, right? So I remember I paid a couple thousand dollars for the hysterectomy. So they take the uterus, but they leave the ovaries because they're like, oh, you know, you're young. You'll go into menopause, uh, you know, naturally. I was like, okay, fast forward to last year in uh, February and I had like this pain that I was having and cramping and I was like cramping I don't even have a year it's like I don't have a period anymore like I'm like brown I could travel every day every day all day <laughs> right so I'm not making the connection and I like got up and then I'm just like uncomfortable and then I had a meeting and I remember I was like I had my camera off and I was just doubled over mm. And I, had, I remember I had taken something I normally didn't take anything. So I was like, oh, and I was like, and it was intense. And so I took something and it took a little of the edge off. And I figured, okay, no big deal. My daughter came home from school. And then we had dinner and then it came back. And I was like, oh, but stronger. And I was like, oh, you know, take something, you know, Tylenol, whatever, take the edge off. Went to bed, two o'clock in the morning. That was it. It was on and popping. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'm getting sick in the bathroom, crawling. Mm. I had to crawl in my daughter's mm. room down the hall. I didn't, couldn't even stand. Crawled into her room <sighs> and woke her up at like 2.30 in the morning. I was like, you got to get dressed. You have to go to your dad's. And I called Max's husband and I was like, can you just come and get her? And he knew something was, he was wrong mm -hmm. because like, she never calls him. <laughs> I'm 
let it alone yeah. in the middle of the night. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, go to the emergency room and, you know, it was just, it was drama, right? Like it was traumatic. And this, I guess, ties into this medical tourism, how awful the healthcare system is here. I don't cry. I was boo-hooing. I thought I was going to mm-hmm. die. Mm-hmm. And, and the lack of urgency mm-hmm. and then the fact that it was like three days, right? So then they figure out like, oh, she's in pain, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, we do the scan. And they say, oh, we don't know what's wrong with you. But you have a mass. Okay, you tell somebody to have a mass, they're automatically going to think cancer. Then they run all these litany of tests to go to admit me bring me upstairs and this old white woman is in the room, right? Cause it's, you know, they have you in the shared room. I'm in the hall on a gurney. She blocks the door. So I can't get in the room. I don't want her in my room. Mind you, I'm still in pain. Right. I think they had me with an IV or something. They were giving me something. And I think they tried giving me morphine, but morphine didn't work. Like they had to give me Dilaudid, which is, I think, eight times stronger than morphine. I was in some pain. Jesus. Test oh after test, ultrasound, like the whole bit. And fast forward, long story short, this was on a Wednesday. That Friday, mind you, this whole time I'm in the hospital, still, oh, we don't know what's wrong with you. Keep tests, 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 right? The third day, I call them Gray's Anatomy, right? They come in, the five little, you know, medical interns or whatever. Oh, we know what's wrong with you. You have an ovarian torsion. I'm like, well, what is that? Mm-hmm. Oh, your ovary twisted itself, has a cyst, ovary twisted itself in a knot. I'm like, what? I was like, so, so what's going to happen? Oh, you're just going to go home. It's just going to die on its own. And they're like, we're going to send up from the food. And then they scurry out. So what happens? Food comes, Krishan eats. Because did I not say I was a foodie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I eat, right? And hospital food isn't, you know, hospital food, right? But when you haven't eaten in three days and mm. all you have is the IV, mm. that's like the best meal in the world. So I'm excited about this nasty hospital food. And I take like three or four bites and this woman comes running in and grabs my food. Wait, I have not eaten in three days. Did you just come in here and grab my food? <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course now I'm like I'm still upset about the woman that blocked the door and they had to yeah. get her out the room then I had another roommate and then she was a mess and you know anyway then I when I had to proceed well I'm skipping because the order so I come in oh my gosh did you eat yeah because I can't order my own food because Chris right. was on the IV I can't eat solid foods unless y'all right. I can eat solid food. Mm-hmm. So yes, I did consume what you brought in here after you ordered it. Yes. Right. Oh, you can't have it. What do you mean I can't have it? They just came in. Grey's Anatomy just came in and told me <laughs> that I could eat food and that I was going to go home and whatever was happening was just going to die. No, no, no. I said, well, then somebody needs to come in here and tell me what has happened. Mm-hmm. It's surgery. Okay, I have a bachelor's in English and a master's in social work. And I do watch TV and I use Google. I'm not a doctor, but I do know enough that you're not supposed to eat food before Mm -hmm. you go Mm -hmm. under the knife. Of course. So hospital, how soon am I supposed to go? No, you got to go into surgery right away. Are you trying to kill me? Right. So I said, somebody needs to come and explain what has happened and transpired in the past 20 minutes. So now the attendant comes up. Oh, I don't know why they told me. You don't know why these five Grey's Anatomies just came in here and told me that, A, I got something that is going to supposedly die on its own. Ordered me food. And then now you're telling me I have to have emergency surgery in 20 minutes. So, of course, I go downstairs, right? Now they're like running around. Oh, shit, she ate. Oh, damn, damn, damn. Because you know, if I die on the table, that's going to be a yeah. issue, right? Go downstairs. Now I'm really pissed. <laughs> yeah, understandably so. A, 
I'm getting my own room when this shit is over. One. <laughs> All right. Make them demand, sis. Go ahead. Tell what like, else. Here's what's going to be different now, right? Right. When I come up out of this shit, I better be in my own room, which I did, right? Good. Two, they're like, well, how many bites did you have? Now the anesthesiologist is pissed because they fed me because he knows because mm -hmm. he actually has a doctor degree, right? Mm -hmm. Unlike me, <laughs> but he knows she's not supposed to eat food and go under the knife. So now he says, oh, well, I don't know if we can operate on her because she has food in her stomach, right? How much did you eat? Throw three, four bites, whatever, whatever. Okay, well, I can bring you down, but I have to bring you out of anesthesia a certain way because I need to make sure you're not going to aspirate. So mm -hmm. fine. I come out of surgery, you know, I have this huge thing on my face because I don't remember any of this, right? Whatever they had in my mouth probably had to stay in there longer. And so I'm semi-conscious. So, of course, your instinct is going to be to bite down. And I bit into my lip. And $5,000, and I have good health insurance, by the way, $5,000, they billed the hospital like $37,000. And just three months ago, I got another bill for $600. So yeah, I'm moving to Portugal. <laughs> Free healthcare. You can't make that up. Can't make that up. You can't make that up. Because I remember when we first met, it was fresh for you. Remember? Yeah. It had just happened. Yeah, because you were like, you were afraid you were going to miss your Portugal trip. So I remember you telling me this, not knowing I would have something a year later similar. It's not, it's just insane. Yeah. It, that, the the mind would say it again. The hormones. Oh, yeah. Right? Because ever, after they had that surgery, because I, I think we had talked about it, and I don't mind saying this publicly, because I, I, I'm a strong proponent of mental health. Yeah. Right? Self-care, mental health. Blacks of Global was born out of a mental health crisis, right? Yeah. I was feeling the effects of COVID, Black people getting murdered on TV, that whole thing, I channeled and redirected it into what is what we now know as Blacks of Global, yes. right? So I had hit, unbeknownst to me, the cause relate or cause and effect was privately I had been dealing with um, an altered state, like just getting really, yeah. really depressed. And I couldn't put my finger on why. And sure enough, after literally I came to and was in the room, my own room, mm -hmm after that horrific uh, hospital experience, it was like a light. Mm. It was like I was in darkness and then I was in light. I haven't had a bad, I mean, I've had things that irritate me, but mm. I haven't been in that deep, dark depression ever since. Mm. So all that is to say is for women, right? It's like our hormones, control a lot and i know in the media you know oh you're hormonal and blah 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 and it can make you second guess yourself feel shame you know you can get gaslit by people Ooh. who can say oh you're crazy or whatever Ooh. get checked out yes right get checked out and if you don't feel comfortable getting checked out in your home country because we've just shared our tales of woe and horror stories Get checked out in another country, but take the advice. Get someone who can advocate for you, mm -hmm. right? Because when you are at your most vulnerable, Ooh. that is when you need to have support. You need to have somebody, a friend, a family member, a medical concierge. Because guess mm -hmm. what? What I would think you would agree, Lynette, is when you were recuperating from the effects of that contrast, and when I was trying to deal with, okay, is it cancer? Or is it, you know, whatever. The last thing you want to deal with is feeling like you're unsafe. And now you're like, I can't even be vulnerable. I should just be able to experience whatever pain, let my body heal. Now you've got to worry about, oh my gosh, you know, I can't even communicate. I don't have anybody here to advocate. So you're in this 
you don't even have the ability to be fully vulnerable in, in that moment and in that state, because now you've got to try and muster up whatever energy you have to advocate for yourself mm -hmm. to get out of the situation. That's a lot. It's heavy. It's a lot. It is. And so I think that's where if anybody is on the fence and thinking about their own health, like I said, get an opinion. If you're in the States and you have something going on, get an opinion, get a quote, right? Like our friend Lynette did. Do the research. But if you had have had bad experiences or you're curious about medical tourism, you know, hopefully this conversation and also um, our guests on season five, Rich and Regular, they have a podcast. They did a wonderful episode on uh, medical tourism a few months ago and shared some links and resources to sites that have accredited professionals on there. Um, definitely listen to that episode and I'll try and remember to when this uh, live finishes to if I can find it link it in the in the description so you can peruse those because it is a growing industry because other countries know that our system is broken mm -hmm. and they are finding you know new ways to help us um, not only get competent medical care but uh, the quality of the care. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. And if I can, on the, the tail end of that, I wanted to thank you for sharing your experience too, because I feel like this conversation has healed a lot of people. I certainly feel the weight is lifted off me because I want to thank you again before I make this next point. Thank you for letting me do this because I've told you some of the story, but I didn't go into detail. And I told, of course, Jesse and some other people, but I, I, I can't tell the story again. So I'm glad that it's here and it's in living color. Like my teacher used to say, we used to laugh at us and live in color, but people can come back and watch this because I can't go through this again because I'm already drained and tired. Y'all could probably see it in my eyes, but it's you're not alone, ladies, if you're going through some hormonal changes. I've been, God put it on my heart to make a course a while ago um, about different issues that I've had to deal with. Krishan, you've seen my before and after fitness picture. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really hoping to finish this course. And Krishan, I've been talking about it since we met, but ladies, we got you. You are not alone. And, and the gentlemen who are here, if you have a woman in your life that you love, it, it, she, who's going through this, definitely direct her to this video mm -hmm. um, because we've got to be more conscientious with the, the, the products we put in our skin the things we ingest with this poor, piss poor food system in the United States. We, there are just so many different things that we have to be aware of to combat before we do our black sit, but I don't wanna to go too deep. I, I wanna leave you all with my eighth um, point. Get some travel insurance. I've already recouped some of my costs. I got all my money back for both of the ultrasounds already. The check is in the, in the mail. And I need to call them with regards to the dental part because I had to extend my trip because mm. I had some stuff that needed more time. Get dental insurance. I flew through JetBlue, so I purchased through them. But I know Krishan has an amazing resource through mm. Arnitha, Arnitha excuse me, Webb. She sells travel insurance. And I'm sure, Krishan, you may have other different things, but get yourself some travel insurance because you sh you may be eligible. I don't want anybody to say, well, Lynette said I get my money back. You may be eligible for reimbursement underneath your your, your policy. So make sure you do get that. And um, yeah, I'll give it back to you. Good yeah, time. I think it's, uh, I think for, like I said, regardless of what um, procedure and, you know, I was telling, we were talking right before we went live, um, what I learned in preparation for our conversation today is that there's a growing industry and I actually started seeing videos after I had this conversation. So, you know, the devices are listening uh, with there's a growing um, segment of black people, but women in particular that are getting hair transplants mm. abroad. Mm. So we talked about it, right? Like mm -hmm. relaxers, straighteners, jerry curls, all of those processors, like back in the day, again, depending on what age uh, you are as you're watching this, um, 
These things have, you know, disrupted our hair follicles. Some people have alopecia, traction alopecia from Mm -hmm. wearing, you know, hairstyles that are too tight, weaves, whatever, right? Um, And so once you, you know, lose the hair, the hair doesn't have the ability to to grow back. And so, or very much thinning, right, from over-processing. So Turkey, the country, surprisingly, is now this growing haven for people to go and get hair transplants and particularly black people. So they go and they analyze your hair and your hair follicles Mm -hmm. and they basically take hair that's growing from other areas of your body because the curl pattern is similar. So if you have, you know, textured hair like myself, they'll take it from another area of your body and graft it individually, one by one, into your hair. Anesthesia, of course. Um, But the cost is significantly cheaper. And so what I had seen, especially in the Mm -hmm. videos that I've seen, it's anywhere from like 1,000 to 2,000, which for, depending on how you like to wear your weave, (laughs) right? Like, style your hair, that could be right? Affordable. Right. Yeah. But from it's amazing. what I've seen, the videos I've seen, the pictures I've seen, um, but it's just to show you that regardless of whatever condition that you're dealing with, there are, you know, either countries or areas of the world that, you know, these cottage industries are burgeoning. And also for people who are considering like, hey, I might be in the medical profession, I can't get licensed in this country, right? But you may have a command of the language, or at least, you know, you can speak English, you can become a medical concierge, right? You can help Mm -hmm. people like us who are navigating a system that is different, you know, than our, the system that we're familiar with. Um, So there's definitely different ways in which you can take your knowledge and use it to your advantage to help improve your situation is really what I want to leave you with. Facts. Yes. Um, I'm seeing the chat, so. Are they still with us? Are they still with us? <laughs> that was heavy. <laughs> I think we got more, uh, I think y'all got more than what you bargained for today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, BJ is laughing about my grades and that. Yes, that was perfect. You know. We all knew who they were. You know, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any. Oh, uh, Tanisha asked, when in Colombia did you miss the U.S.? No. Wow. That was like no decision. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even let you get it out. No. I mean, this is my place of birth, birth and origin. So yeah. I, I'm not going to, you know, bash it because as a woman, you know, there are many women in other different societies and cultures who are doing way worse than us. You know, mm-hmm. there's um, mutilation of women. There's, oh, there's just gross monstrosities that we don't have to deal with. That yeah. being said, though, I am going to talk about the reality of my situation as I know it. And it's just, it's, it's, it's been put on my spirit, which is why I'm so glad Black Sit Global Passport and the web and the uh, podcast exist. Um, it's been put on my spirit that it's it's time for me to go somewhere else to have brighter horizon. So I didn't miss the U.S. at all. Um, I work very hard. I, God has truly blessed me to work for myself for a while now, and I work hard. I work mm-hmm. hard. In Colombia, I was making it rain. <laughs> you get <laughs> you get cincuenta pesos. You get dice pesos. Everyone gets get pesos. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So no, I didn't. Tunisia, I didn't miss it. No. Wow, wow. So big takeaway is like I said, Lynette has been gracious enough to share her journey. And again, thank you for the transparency. And I know you'll circle back with other resources for us yes. in the community as well. Um, And it sounds like you have a new country to consider, which we're excited about and supportive of. (laughs) They're they're talking about when you said, did you miss the you? No. (laughs) (laughs) Last lecture, he said, couldn't even get the other two letters out. (laughs) 
<laughs> no life of luxury and ease. And that's what I experienced, a life of luxury and ease. Yes, yes. And then I will talk about uh, les hombres really quickly, the men. Let's talk about Enrique Carlos. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Sleeve man. tattoos, green eyes, hmm. salt and pepper hair. And I like them thick. They had thickums over there. My sorrow was laughing at me. I call them thickums. And they was thick and cute. And, and they was in them jeans, honey. What? So, oh, so okay. USA what? I mean, I'm not looking for that right now. Because <laughs> black men, to me, are numero uno, no matter yes. where I am. But the Colombian men, OK. I was like, all right. <laughs> and the women are beautiful. I see why the men are going over there in droves. I get it. I'm hating. I hating on no woman. They're gorgeous. <laughs> Beautiful people and very nice spirits too. So, oh so God. I was like, USA, what? Wow, yeah, USA. caliente, what? Yeah. <laughs> right, but yeah. it, I love it. It's my country, but it served its purpose for me. Same, same. I've given the U.S. Well, my birthday's in a few weeks, and yes. uh, I've given the U.S. a good. Well, will be forty nine year run. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm take. I'm going to take the other half <laughs> if I am so blessed um, and uh, see what the other side brings. So with that, I want to thank you, uh, Lynette, for your candor and for hanging out and rocking with us. And for all of y'all that are watching in the present, in the future, definitely, you know, like the video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, definitely subscribe. I'll be live again tomorrow at 2 p.m with Colleen Showalter, who is from Portugal, the place, who helped me find my apartment in Portugal. Congrats we'll again. Answering, thank you. We'll be answering uh, all the questions, showing you some behind the scenes, because some people have asked about the apartment, the hunt, the whole process. So we'll be talking about all things Portugal. Got a lot of resources to share. So if you are so inclined, make sure you hit the notification bell so you do not miss that live tomorrow. And then I will be live again on the 17th with Sandra Gomez Pinto, who was the attorney that was on with us from Portugal a few weeks ago. She will be joining again and we'll be talking about, I think we're going to be talking about digital nomad visa, NHR, like getting more into the journey steps for those of you who are interested in Portugal. So hope to see you then. And Thanks. Take care. Peace and blessings. Bye. Thank you.